Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines. We are broadcasting live from the beautiful Think Tech Hawaii TV studio in the Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. This show is based on my book, which is also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. Today's special guest is Guy Hagi. He is the very popular weather anchor on Hawaii News Now, and today we are going beyond weather. Hey, Guy. How's it, Rusty? <laughs> Great seeing you the other night at the Guns N' Roses <laughs> concert. Yeah, one of the rare nights that uh, I get to go out and uh, take off my uh, weatherman outfit <laughs> and go out and, and, ming and mingle with everybody. It was crazy. It was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Guy, you know, a lot of people know, know you, but they mm -hmm. don't know you. And yeah. Yeah. I want everyone to get to know you today. Uh-oh. You sure? Yeah. So <laughs> let's go. Let's start from the beginning. Where, okay. where did you grow up and what schools did you attend? I grew up in Lower Nuuanu. Um, near Liliha Bakery. Oh, yeah. So I know that menu back to front. Mahalo to the new owners of Liliha Bakery. They've really done a good job with uh, changing that thing. But I grew up there. I went to Lanakila. I walked to Lanakila. I walked to Kuanakoa Middle and then caught the bus to McKinley until, until I graduated. Wow. And yeah. then what kind of sports did you play? So early on was everything, right? Football, baseball, basketball. I was decent in all of them, never stellar in any of them. And then just about, just at the end of middle school, which was intermediate school for us, um, somebody turned us on to surfing and we haven't turned back since. Wow. Yeah. And then what college did you end up attending? So I went to UH for a little bit. I went to HPU, but it was HPC back then. Ah. I never graduated though because I got a pretty decent job and uh, the short-sightedness of youth went after the money and the, and the fun of the job and thinking, I'm going to get back to college, I'm going to get back. So it's one of my great regrets, but I never, I never did finish. Yeah. So what job was it? Uh, it was a sales rep uh, in the surf industry. Perfect. So it was exciting at that time, right? The surf industry was growing, it was booming. And if you're a surfer and you have entree into this world that's deeper behind the surf shops, right? You're talking about the best shapers, the, the, surf, the surf stars, the latest equipment. And I got to be a part of that. So that's why it was very exciting. So I thought, ah, of course I'm going to put off college for a little while to do this. And it ended up being a job that I was with for some 20 odd years. That's amazing. Yeah. And then your wife, Kim mm -hmm. Janaula, mm -hmm. she was a fantastic weather TV news, TV yeah. news anchor, not right. weather, but right. the main anchor. Right. Well, what I think people quickly found out about Kim is um, that she had a background in news and weather was just a way to get her onto that. Um, she kind of stumbled onto doing the weather. She graduated from UT, University of Texas uh, at Austin, so she's a Longhorn. And she graduated in a four-year program in three years. Jeez. She's one of those, right? And then, and then so she was a journalist um, for, in um, like uh, Texas, Arizona, San Francisco, Florida, and then came to Hawaii uh, on a short-term thing, and then ended up staying. Yeah, she was phenomenal as a, yep. as a TV news anchor. Yep. And yep. you guys have two kids? So we have two kids, Luke and Aaliyah, um, junior and sophomore now, 15 and 16 years old. Yeah, and uh, it, it's tough changing them. And, you know, I mean, this is the, the most fun times, I guess, because so much is happening in their life. Yeah, and, and what, how old are they? So Luke is 16 and Aaliyah's just made 15. Wow. So they were a year and a half apart. We didn't waste any time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but, you know, it's, it's challenging and fun and exciting all at the same time. You know, teen, dealing with teenagers is exactly what they tell you. It, it can be the greatest thing ever. It can be the worst hellacious experience ever as well, depending on the time of the day and the time of the month, yeah. And then your, um, obviously your passion is surfing. Yeah, it has been since we started. And, um, I tell everybody that surfing is unlike any other sport. It's more obsessive than anything. I mean, Rusty, you've been playing tennis since you were a little kid, right? But I don't think there was ever a tennis court that you went, man, I gotta be at the tennis court at 10 in the morning when the conditions are just right. And it's so fleeting that the waves are good. Everything's gotta come together in nature. And when they do, you have that pull of nature that fishermen know, that mountain climbers know, that snowboarders know, um, and it's that, thing that keeps on pulling you out into the ocean 
And had I not gone to McKinley, I probably would have been a better student. <laughs> because McKinley's so close to the, the ocean, right? Like we figured that oh, we catch a wave before class, catch a couple, and the waves are so good going, and eh, we'll go back at lunch. We'll be okay. We'll be okay. <laughs> and then at lunch, it's like, we better go. No, no, just a couple more, couple more. No, no, we'll go back after lunch. <laughs> so there, there were too many days after that. And my parents know this now, but they didn't know. But um, yeah, we, we should have been in school. But, <laughs> but, but the call of the ocean was just too big. And then now it's affected my kids. But it's easier because we have a little more control over, <laughs> over where they go. Because I know the tricks about yeah. getting out there. Yeah. So Guy, out of all those years that you've been in the water surfing, mm. how many sharks have you seen? You know, I've seen a handful, but nothing like the big stuff that would chase you out. I can't say I saw anything really big or really dangerous, but I also saw, uh, a, I think, probably a 15-foot shark that Perry Dane caught outside of Haleiwa. Oh. And I was in the water earlier that day surfing. Whoa. And to see something that big, you and I could join hands and we couldn't go around the shark. Wow. Okay? Um, to think that that thing's swimming under you and you don't see it, is more a, 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 a thing, a, a more unsettling feeling. But, but seeing a shark, eh, when you see them, they're like dogs. They're curious dogs, right? It's the ones you don't see, and, and they're the ones they're not going to show up until it's too late. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not a big thing, ex except for I think parts of Maui. It's been rather scary for the last couple of years, and then we've had attacks, obviously, um, up on the uh, up on our North Shore as well. So it's something we're always aware of, but I, I don't think it 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 detracts us from surfing at any one particular time. No. And then, you know, early in your career, you did surf reports on radio. Yeah. How did that happen? That lasted a long time. Um, I was a teenager working at Town & Country. My first surf job you know, was working as a little stock guy, you know, doing with T-shirts and, and shorts and leashes and boards and stuff. And then they had professional surfers there on staff that they would sponsor. And it was their responsibility to do the surf report. But when you got to do a surf report every morning, seven days a week, 7 a.m. in the morning, the professional surf guys got other um, priorities, let's say. <laughs> so they couldn't get, so Craig said, hey, guy, you know what? You speak half decent English, because you're a townie. <laughs> um, so why don't you do the surf report? It was a big gas, it's 18 years old, to have your name on the radio, right? That was a big charge, right? So that was incentive enough. And then later on, it turned into a little business when the surf radio station said, we want to sell the surf report. So instead of giving it to town and country, Guy, how about we have you do it? We'll pay you to do this. So it ended up a little bit of side business. I wouldn't say that it was a job per se, because it was a whole lot of fun gathering surf information and uh, recording a little 40-second surf report and putting it out for everybody to hear. And there's only a couple guys doing it at the time. And I think that helped to establish the brand, if, if there is such a thing. Yeah. And so everybody kind of was familiar with my name. Now, how did you get your start into TV? So that was all... You know, you know how they say, um, uh, you know, luck is when opportunity meets um, preparedness, right? So that all happened. I was doing surf reports for the better part of 15 years by then. And Dan Cook um, was the first guy that uh, KHNL hired when they started the news production away from KHNL. So that started everything to effect. Sherry Shima, who was their weekend anchor, had to weekend weather, had to do their main weather. So they needed a weekend weather person. And the word came about that, hey, let's just try that guy. He's got a good identity. He can bring us a new, mar a new um, demographic, the surf guys that don't watch the news. Yeah. So we brought him in. So I was hired there, uh, but they couldn't put me on payroll because they had just been bought. Uh -huh. So then Dan Cook said, they hired you, but they can't come over to us, yeah. and we got a spot for you. So that's how it all started. Wow. Yeah. And then you have an interesting story about uh, when you actually first started at KGMB. Yeah, because I, had, I was going to move from KHNL to KGMB, and before, and Kim was already there, and Kim said, you know what, before you start, let's go on this vacation. So let's go to New York. So we went to New York and brought my parents along. And it was a wonderful trip. We go, we go top of the World Trade Center, we come back home, um, and we wake up the morning of September 11, wow. 2001. We had just landed the night before. So we got up, Kim turns on the TV, all hell's breaking loose. She goes, we're being attacked. We got to get to the news station now. And this is my first day that I'm supposed to start. So she develops the pictures, because back then you had to develop the pictures. She develops the pictures of, of us atop the World Trade Center, brings it to work. And they go, okay, now here's Guy Hagi with the weather. None of this fanfare, the, the lay, the beautiful welcome, none of that. It was all of this, here we go, uh, just do the weather for 30 seconds, we're going to get right back to the coverage of the bombing, the attack. 
and and that's how I started. That was my first day on KGMB, and it's and it's and I've been there ever since. Yeah, since September 11, 2001. And then you know, on Hawaii News Now, I mean, you're such a popular weather anchor for Hawaii News Now. What is it about your job now that you absolutely love? Um, I've been doing it for a long time, right? I love the weather and the weather conditions that, that we get to report on. I have a little tagline. Somebody said I should trademark it. I went to it. Uh, but anyway, the line is the best weather on the planet. Yeah. I really feel that that's what we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, the best weather on the planet. I've traveled around, not, not you know, a lot of places, but I went to enough places to know that day in, day out, we have the best spot, right? In terms of surf, in terms of tr temperature and all that. So I love that part of, about the job, that I get to report on that. And nine times out of 10, it's happy weather, right? Yeah. I'm a happy guy, you know that yeah, now. totally. And um, I always look at the positive side, so I like that. And then the other part, the people I get to meet. I mean, just the people I work with are incredible, right? The staff, from, from the guy you don't see to Blurt Rick Blangiardi, everybody's awesome to work with. And the people that walk in the studio. Just on Saturday, my friend, Max Holloway, won the, yeah. won the championship again, right? Yeah. And I got to meet Max, got to hang with him, talk to him. And guys like that, Zeke Lau, just won the World Cup at Sunset Beach against the best surfers in the world. I've known that kid, thanks to the news, like, like that. So, and, and that, and the governors and the politicians I get to meet, so, so that's got to be the best part of my job. It's not a day in, day out thing, but on the occasion that I get, uh, you know, to meet these people, it, it's really, really uh, a, a very powerful thing. And uh, on tonight's Magnum PI episode too. Yeah, there's a recognizable <laughs> face I think that, that that might be pretty cool. So you may want to check that out. And then when you do your newscast, yeah, you know, you're you're so real. You have your own style. How would you describe your style? Um, you know, when I first started this news, news business, I talked to Jim Leahy because I knew him from radio because he used to do um, radio with my station as well. And he told me there's only three rules. The first rule is, well, two rules in specific. There's you got to be yourself. You can't be anybody else. And number two is don't tell a lie because it can come back and bite you in a behind. Yeah. <laughs> so, so those two rules stuck with me. And then I, and, and I never had any coaching to do it. So I only know how to be myself. Granted, it was a rough start. Don't watch the beginning part of my career. Oh, man. <laughs> but, but as you get better at anything, you know, like I've never had tennis lessons, yeah. but I played it for a little while just playing it by myself. And I figured out what to do and, and where I could actually, I could hit the ball back to you all the time if you start not be Rusty Komori the pro. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you just try to hit the ball with you, I can play ping pong with you, right? So same thing. I've, I've learned enough over the years to, to figure out what works and what doesn't work. And the thing that works for me is being myself. Yeah. Yeah. No, and, and we love that from you. And you're very real. You're, you're open. Uh, yeah. It, I mean, I just, just by happenstance, it happens to work with the audience, too, being myself. Because sometimes being yourself might not work. And might, that might not have been where my career had led me had I been myself, uh, been true to myself. I might be in another vocation. Who knows? And Guy, let's talk about memes. Yeah. You know, yeah. because you know you're super popular <laughs> when people are doing memes about you and your work. I know, I know, and, and I'm very blessed with that. And people, and what's funny is my friends and family, they're the ones get get upset. <laughs> Aren't you offended? They go, no, are you kidding me? I mean, I love all the attention that and, and, and talent somebody had to put in the time to put that in. <laughs> you know, so, and then now they've gotten even more creative. They like, um, there's this guy, Mento Maui Brada. Yeah. He's taken clips of um, like um, the Wizard of Oz, and he's dubbed Pigeon over it. <laughs> and he's put my name in there. I mean, that's so flattering. You know what I mean? I, I, how can I not be flattered and humbled by it? So every time a, a big weather event comes, it's like, oh, no, here come the memes. I'm like, oh, yes, here come the memes. You know what I mean? Because obviously there are other people doing the same thing, and they don't get that kind of attention despite being very good at what they do. So I don't know what I don't know why how the, the <laughs> thing came, but and what's really funny is the whole meme thing started when I was gone. Yeah. And uh, impending severe weather event was coming, and somebody started making memes, even though I was not even here to to, to address it. And then somebody on the radio station said, "Hey, you got this thing coming? All these memes? Have you known?" I said, "No." But uh, but when I looked at him, I go, "Shoot! I can't wait for to see more." <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like artwork for some of these guys, man. So so I'm I'm flattered till this day. Oh, that's too funny, guy. Okay. <laughs> now, I want to ask you about Cheap Eats and how oh, yeah. it all started. Yeah. It, it, it wasn't creative at all. Gal, La, Lau Galdera, dear departed friend of mine, and Russell Yamanoha, who was a reporter, the sports guy at uh, KHNL, they started the, the series already. And they weren't the first 
in, by any stretch here or across the country to do a, a, a cheap eat series. Um, they, as they sat down and said, we have this, now that Hawaii News Now has come to pass, this is one of the things that we got to do. We got to do cheap eats. Hagi, you're the guy you're going to do it with. And uh, what do you think? Who you on the call? So I mean, I don't know. We're thinking, and then you know, all the names are dropped in the hat, and then and then I said, well, I know Augie. I've known Augie since he was a little kid. Um, and then let's do Augie. It's going to be real easy because I can be the straight man foil, and I just toss it over to him. He'll make it a cracker. Yeah. And we both local boys, <laughs> loving local food, and it's, it turned out to be really good. But thanks to Galdera and Yamanoha, who kind of set the table for us. Yeah, I had Augie T on my show a couple weeks ago, and I know that you guys are super close friends yeah. for a long yeah. time. Now, I love watching that segment of, of Cheap Eats, mm -hmm. and, and it works. I mean, I start to yeah. get hungry for it now. Uh, yeah. Is it as fun as it looks? It, it's a lot of fun. We got it down to a science, so it's not a lot of work. We have some very talented photographers and editors who make it look just fantastic. Um, and so we just rely on that. We have this formula. We try to, you know, um, not try to make it the same every time, but we got it so where um, the resources, uh, we maximize the resources. And the local restaurants are very, very accommodating. They're very good. Um, and it's just a whole lot of fun. And no, we don't eat as much as you think. <laughs> uh, because they give us all this food, we bite it, we taste it, and it's hard to talk and have food in your mouth. And then we generally box it up, because otherwise we'd be, we'd be there for an hour and a half eating. So then we box it up and send it back to the station. On Cheap Eats Day, it's the best day for the people there at the station, because they get like <laughs> eight plates of whatever it is gourmet things we're eating. Well, that's some good insights there. Yeah, it's fun. Guy, we're going to take a quick break, okay. and then when we come back, I want to continue going beyond weather. Okay, sounds good. You're watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii with my special guest, Guy Hagi. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. Hello, I'm Yukari Kunisue. I'm your host of New Japanese Language Show on Think Tech Hawaii, called Konnichiwa Hawaii, broadcasting live every other Monday at 2 p.m. Please join us where we discuss important and useful information for the Japanese language community in Hawaii. The show will be all in Japanese. Hope you can join us every other Monday at 2 p.m. Aloha. Welcome back to Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My special guest today is Guy Hagi, who is the very popular weather anchor for Hawaii News Now, and today we are going beyond weather. Guy, in my book, Beyond the Lines, I talk about finding greatness and yeah. ultimately finding fulfillment. Yeah. Other than surfing, yeah. what makes you happy and fulfilled? I think now um, being a father is definitely seeing my kids happy, seeing all their needs met and being encouraged to live great lives and affect other people in a positive way and seeing my wife happy and doing the same thing. I, that, that, when all said and done, that's what's most important, right? I mean, when everybody talks about, yeah, money's not the most important thing, money's not the most important thing. But, you know, the problem is that you don't realize that until it's too late. Yeah. So now it's more about experiences with the kids. It's about making sure they make the right choices and making sure they are happy when they make those right choices. So that's what makes me happy, seeing them thrive and seeing them happy uh, by doing the, the, the best things, right? So we surround ourselves with really good friends that hopefully my kids can see that, that the friends that we've chosen um, are the friends that you know lift us up, are the friends that need our help sometimes, and the friends that we can reach out when we need our help too. And hopefully that rubs off on them because ultimately choice is the biggest word, I think, right? Yeah. Um, you want to have enough education so you can have a, a, a vocational choice, right? You want to have um, uh, the, the opportunity to make that choice because a lot of times if you didn't prepare yourself correctly, you don't have a choice. Yeah. You can only have this choice of one job because you only did this much, this much education. 
you do this much education, you got the choice of where to work, right? Uh, so that's kind of what instills, we try to instill in them and, and brings me a lot of pleasure seeing that uh, they're kind of going down that path. And your wife, Kim, right now, she is the director of development for Iolani School? Correct. I mean, Iolani must be so fortunate and lucky to have someone like her there. Yeah, I mean, it's a two-way street. You know, it's a wonderful institution. Yeah. I mean, uh, and, and they're doing some great things moving forward. And uh, Luke got into that school before Kim had even any thoughts of working there. Now with the two kids on campus, plus with Kim being there, it helps our family dynamics so much. And then with all the things that the school is doing that Kim's being a big part of, that's giving her a lot of sat satisfaction as well. And the Ilani network goes out across the world. Um, she's dealing with um, alumni um, from the far reaches of the, of, uh, you know, the Orient. We're talking Hong Kong, Tokyo, to London, to New York, to, to Rome. I mean, all those places, that's how far out the network's gone. Like any good um, institution, um, you know, their alumni are making positive differences out there. And they want to come back and, and make a positive influence on the institution that changed their lives. So she's made that connection stronger. Uh, that's been kind of her goal, and it's also helped um, in a secondary way by helping the finances, uh, uh, you know, and, and getting their, their needs met as well. Yeah, for sure. Mm. And Guy, everyone has different definitions of success. Yeah. I want to know how you would define what success is. Um, well, kind of going back to the other thing, I think if, if, um, if I'm making my family proud for me, um, and the, by the choices that I make and the jobs that I do and the people that I affect in the way that I affect them, I think that's successful to me. Okay. You know, I, I mean, I mean, that's a catch all kind of, kind of, you know, uh, airy kind of thing, but I think when I, and I don't think about it very much, you yeah. know what I mean? Uh, but I think when I go to sleep at night, when I lay down, if I, if I did something that was counter to those things, then it would keep me up at night. And I can't stay up at night anymore. <laughs> I, I, got, I gotta hit the bed, 8.30, I gotta be ready for sleeping, man. Breathing exercise is done, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, teeth brushed, all, all that stuff, got, gotta be ready. I mean, sunrise starts early. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's a reason why it's called sunrise. <laughs> uh, yeah, but we're pre-sunrise. Yeah. yeah. In my younger days, my friends would be going home from their late, late, late night activities and I'd be going to work yeah. at the same time, so yeah. Now, reflecting back on your life, Yeah you know, back to when you had your first job with doing all the surfing accessories and then the surf reports and then getting into TV and being at Hawaii News Now. Why are you successful? Jeez, Rusty, I can't tell you. Aside from, you know, God's blessings, I, I can't even tell you. I, I don't know. I, <laughs> I, you know, we live in the toughest place to make a living, yeah. right, in the U.S. It's, it's tough. Um, and, and I just happened to to, to just ma manage to navigate my way through um, the grace of a lot of people, you know what I mean? I mean, Rick Blanchardi, my current boss, has been uh, unbelievable to me and my success in, in, since, uh, since we started working together. Um, the crew that I work with now, the crew that I worked with before, they've been instrumental in, in whatever you call this success in terms of my job. In terms of my family, I gotta credit my wife. I mean, she works really hard at everything. She's like type A, I'm like typical surfer type. <laughs> like, where do I gotta go, what do I gotta do? And, and she has the vision and foresight for everything. I mean, we moved into town even before our kids were going to school in town, right? She had the vision that this is what we're gonna do, this is what the, where the kids are gonna go to school and this and that, and it all came to pass. So, so she plays a, lot, a large part of my personal success too. So. It's definitely not anything that I can pat myself on the back and say yeah, I did. I mean, I mean, you know, even even my success in surfing, I'm still riding a really short board at my age. Yeah. So that's really good, but it's because of the the guys that I surf with and the guys that help push me along. So, um, and with regard to my kids and and their being successful, it's because my parents uh, kind of carved out the same thing for me. Yeah. You know, they were young parents raising four kids, and the lessons they taught me kind of invariably get passed on to the kids. Now, Guy, what's something that you've always wanted to do that you just haven't done yet? Sumo wrestle. <laughs> yeah. no, 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 I, I'm a great admirer of sumo wrestlers, believe it or not. Um, I don't know, Rusty, every year there's something that comes up, and a lot of it is, um, is uh, definitely physical, right? Like, um, like, uh, uh, like I've, I've never surfed um, outside of Mexico and Hawaii, believe it or not. I've never traveled down to the Mentawais or down to Australia or, the, or those places. And now my son, that's all he thinks about. 
right? I've skied and snowboarded a lot of places. I want to ski and snowboard a lot more. I've, I've never gone to Europe. But there's places in Japan I still haven't gone. So that's the short-term selfish kind of stuff I want to do. Um, uh, as far as uh, loftier goals, I don't know. You know, I don't know. I just want to be, I, I think, if I can see my kids well um, past their successful college years, I think that's where our goals are now as parents. Yeah. So, so that would mean success for us in the short term, or what I, what I would like to do and like to see. I can't imagine what that's like. My dad, who died uh, earlier this year, um, you know, he cried at my high school graduation. I couldn't understand it. I went, what, why? Why? I, I didn't get it back then. I get it now. I get it now. Um, in fact, um, when I watch those ESPN um, uh, stories, those are the ones that really make me tear up. The ESPN stuff, right? Yeah. Oh, the father sacrificed so much for the son and, you know, and all this. So that's the stuff that tears me up and, and affects me now. So hopefully I can be like that now. Yeah. So talk, talking about your dad, um, yeah. you know, what kind of man was he and what did he do? Well, um, local, local boy, right? High school educated, Farrington grad. Um, had kids really early. I'm sure it was a surprise, shotgun wedding kind of thing. I'm positive that's what it was. Um, went right to work at the Chevron refinery, the Standard Oil refinery. Stayed there until he retired, right? Jeez. Worked hard every day, but, nine, but not nine to five, but he would leave the house at 6.30, come home by 3.30, and then stand up guy, my mom who was pursuing her career as in the, in the um, construction industry, she was vice president. She got to, the, she got to Liberty Bank. She got to vice president of uh, Loves Bakery for years. She was in a management career. He was white collar, I mean, his blue collar union. Yeah. Right? But he'd come home, take off that hat, wash the clothes, cook the dinner for us. And then when we started surfing, every day take us to the beach. Hmm. Every day. Not complain, hit the tennis ball against the wall. And all the boys, we're talking the neighborhood crew of guys, five guys, he'd take us all go surfing every day. No matter how hard his day was, we never heard about it. He would just come home, take us to the thing. That's what he'd do. This was my, my kids. We never had that, hey, I love you, kid, or, you know, you, I'm doing this for you. None of that. It was just, this is what he did. He took it, came home, make sure the clothes are washed. He'd make sure the, the food is cooked. I mean, not every time we, we ate his food, we ate whatever, but he made sure we ate. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then back then it was tough. He had, you know, he had three kids. He never traveled around the world until he was later in life when he went to Las Vegas ten times a year. <laughs> <laughs> that was his outlet. Yeah, Vegas that was his stuff. outlet. But that was my biggest frustration. Dad, Tokyo, <laughs> Japan, you know, Rome, London, <laughs> Italy. No, Las Vegas, man. It's all Las Vegas and more. Downtown. I love the people that go to downtown. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, great all for them. But. There are other places to go. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so, so I t I've taken my kids, and they have that thing, too. Yeah. No, yeah. Nice to hear about all that. Yeah, and so it was awesome. Guy, other than a family member, who's been a mentor to you uh, in, you know, in, in your TV news um, business? I, I don't know that there's any one, but there's a lot of people that I look at, you know, around as in idol. the business as, as, as people that I think, I kind of would like to do that in that way, yeah, right? Like Jim Leahy, okay. right? I, th I think Jim's awesome in everything he does. Um, and and as great as a guy as he is on TV, he's an even better guy outside. Yeah. And you would talk about real. The thing about Jim is you can't have the camera on him all the time. <laughs> yeah. okay. so, so Jim Leahy, I think what he's done is unreal. I think what Joe Moore has done is unreal. I don't know Joe very well. I met him once, wow. right? He's done things on his own terms. He's not, you know, I can't say that um, you know, some people, he has, his, he has his detractors, right? But to be that successful and that dominant in what he did, it's incredible, For right? For so long. Yeah. Um, uh, Michael W. Perry and Larry Price, those guys, right? Still doing the same thing. Well, well you know, Larry's um, retired and, and Mike's getting older, but, but still those guys and the way they carry their community service out too, right? So those are the guys I kind of I look at, uh, always doing things the right way. Um, yeah, that, that's kind of it. I mean, I, I, I don't really look at weather people per se, but I look at other people in sports, the sports commentators, Al Michaels coming from here. You know, I was a kid when Al Michaels was on the radio and on KITV here, you know, to see that. And then to see guys like Neil Everett go on. Neil's a buddy, you oh, know yeah, what I mean? totally. And to see him, like, run L.A. now, <laughs> yeah. it's incredible. So all, all of that, I, I kind of look at all of that as inspiration. Yeah. Well, Guy, you know, thank you for really 
sharing your insights on Beyond the Lines today. It was like, it was awesome having you on the show. Thank you. Uh, and it's kind of tough, Rusty, doing this as a local kid, talking about yourself for too long. <laughs> before, like, my friends would be walking out going, Pfft. But you, But congratulations on you and all your success. The book's doing very well, yeah. from what I understand. I guess I got to take time to read it. <laughs> but remember, I, I, you know, because of my background, man, I was honest with you. But, but yeah, congratulations. I heard the book's doing very well, making some very positive impact. So congratulations. Thank you, Guy. Mm -hmm. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit my website, RustyKomori.com, and my book is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and all Costco stores in Hawaii. I hope that my book and TV show inspires you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.